The story goes is that when the Soviets were able to capture German Stug trees, they studied its design and also its practicality, and they figured that it would be a good idea to try and imitate that. So initially, from the 10 that they were able to capture, they tried to convert them into their own self-propelled guns, which they called the SG-122. So they did try to mount a 122mm howitzer on the Stugs. However, as time went on, it proved to be costly, and so they tried to do their own. First with the SU-76, and then that also proved to be a failure. So now you have the SU-122, a self-propelled howitzer. That's the first mistake right here. So the SU-122 is a self-propelled howitzer that's based on the chassis of a T-34. So anyway, this would be an inbox review. So as always, we'd be taking a look at the parts, the sprues, and some light commentary along the way. And without further ado, let's get into it. So for the first two sprues here, you can see that these ones would all be the running gear. And these would be the exterior parts. Most of them would go in and around the hull. For this one, you can see that Tamiya uses their famous polycap design for the running gear. These would be the ones attaching for the road wheels. And then taking a look at this sprue, you can see that these two would be for the front glazes of the tank. Then also this would be the rear panel. This is also the intake or the engine cover for the engine compartment on the back of the tank. This is also the exhaust covers found on the rear panel. Then you have here extra track links that would be found on the fenders. This one, you have here the driver's hatch. And you can see it's fairly detailed. You also have here towing cables. Once again, fairly detailed. Parts for externals, such as the external field drums. And you can see Tamiya went ahead and dented them all. So at least that adds a degree of detail to it. The rest go in and around the engine compartment area of the tank. This also serves its purpose as the external driver's hatch. Yes, so these two parts go together. And the rest are just grab handles in and around the tank. Now, as mentioned earlier, you have here your running gear, and you can see that the rubber rims of the tires of the road wheels are nicely done and nicely molded in, as you can see up there, all the grooves. So you can go ahead and probably detail this up by chipping it off to simulate wear and tear. And you also have the sprockets, also the idler wheels. Next up, you have the superstructure, the lower hull, and then also parts for the front and the top of the superstructure, as well as the gun. So now let's take a look at the superstructure first. And as you can see from the get-go, Tamiya did model this quite nicely with a fair amount of surface detail into it. And you can see that it quite resembles a T-34. Now the main difference there is that it has a superstructure to house the 122mm field gun. So as I mentioned earlier, you have the back panel that goes here, the cover intake, and then also the ones here. Then next you have the lower hull with a fair amount of detailing as well, with the suspension already molded in. And you can see that Tamiya still has it in their motorization setup so you can go ahead and just fill these in and there is a part that includes a screw and nut that you have to place here and then for this one you have yet again external parts you have a shovel right here as well as more external fuel cans well this is only one then you have here the casemate of the 122mm. Unfortunately, it is molded in two pieces, 
So you would have to go ahead and fill in that seam and correct that seam in the middle. The other parts here are for the mantlet of the tank and also the inside of where the gun would be attached. Then going around, most of these parts are just straightforward. Uh, this would be the platform for the commander figure. And then the rest are grab handles as well. This also serves as the commander's hatch. While these small ones right here are for, if I'm not mistaken, a vision port that would be mounted on top of this. Now, for this pro, we have here the commander figure. It's separated in multiple parts. You have the upper torso, the lower, then also the arms. Then this one, you have here the roof of the superstructure. And then the small hatches are for this. And if I am not mistaken, these are just vision ports. And then here would be the commander's hatch and commander's area. This is the front glazes of the SE-122, so that goes right there. As you can see, fair amount of surface detail. The rest are brackets for the external fuel drums and also other hatches and exterior parts of the tank. Then right here you also have the commander's periscope. Then lastly, for the SE-122 kit, you have here a bag of metal parts, a metal shaft, your screw, and also a nut. Then you have here your decals, just generic numbers and also red stars, and also your tracks for the tank. As you can see, the back side is detailed, and also the front. Just a little amount of cleanup here and there, such as this one right here. Now the instructions provided come into the Japanese one and then also the English. Now going inside you can see there's a layout of parts here, the assembly. And I did realize that the screw and the nut do have a purpose. So this part right here, it's supposed to fasten the metal shaft that is used to secure the idler wheels. This is in relation to Tamiya's earlier design of motorization, so I figured that this would be to secure it right there when it's being motorized. But of course this is no longer motorized and I think you can do without this part. The rest is pretty much straightforward, just shows you how to assemble most of the upper hull pieces, then also the interior of the hull and also the placement of the commander's figure and the hatch. Then lastly, you have a small diagram here with the T-34 and also the SU-122. Then going around the back, you have simple markings right here. Here's a dark green and flat black scheme. So most of the tanks dark green and the rubber rims of the road wheels are flat black. Then no particular unit as you can see it's just a star and also numbers and also here you have an alternative uh, painting scheme with flat white and also dark green so this would be simulating winter wash camel and there you have it the russian self-propelled gun su-122 by tamiya it does look like a straightforward kit and also something that would be nice for collectors of Soviet World War II AFVs. And that's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a thumbs up. But if you didn't, leave a thumbs down. And let me know down in the comments below what you think of this tank, if it's something worthwhile, or any feedback in general. And as always, stay safe, keep modeling, and until next time, goodbye.